Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Evan Adler, and I am a physical therapist here at UNC Therapy Services. And welcome to um, this installment of Therapy Thursday. Today is July 1st, uh, 2021. It is hot here in North Carolina, um, but it is a... Uh, um, at that time of year that everybody's kind of getting outside, doing outside things. <clears throat> and, um, you know, North Carolina is kind of a mecca for, uh, for golfers. So um, today we have a very uh, apropos um, presentation here uh, about mobility and golf. Um, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Megan here in a moment. Uh, but before I do that, um, <clears throat> I just want to uh, thank everybody for joining us here today. Uh, Therapy Thursday is run as part of our Community Engagement Committee, um, which helps to serve the community, deliver some uh, information out there. Um, we are getting back to doing more in-person events at uh, local running races and at climbing gyms and uh, all sorts of other different things in the area. Um, but we shifted to more of an online presence uh, during the time of COVID, and it's been pretty successful. So we'd like to continue that and provide this to everybody. Um, as we go through today, um, I will be monitoring the chat. So if anybody has any questions, um, please do drop them in the chat. If they're super important and uh, specific, we'll, we'll pop in and try to get them answered. If not, we'll try to hold them to the end and we'll save some time there for questions. Um, I'll also put the links in there so that you can uh, find this later on our YouTube channel for Therapy Thursday. And then I'll also drop the link in there as well for our Facebook page. Invite you to uh, please uh, like us on Facebook and you'll find out about more Therapy Thursday events and in-person things that are coming. All right, I think that's about everything I had on my list to start with. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Megan. All right, hello. Oops, trying to make sure my mouse works. So a little bit about me. Um, my name is Megan Watts. Uh, I'm gonna have my email at the end. So I just got married, so it's a little confusing. If you do want to email me, it's under my previous last name. So I'm a physical therapist who works at the Ambulatory Care Center. I have a background in strength and conditioning, and I have experience with kids, golfers, people with chronic pain, collegiate athletes, and kind of everyone in between. I love playing and watching sports, so definitely looking forward to the Olympics if everything's not played at like 4.30 in the morning. I like being outside hiking cooking, being at the beach. I just moved to Holly Springs recently in this crazy housing market. I have an orange tabby cat, who you'll see later on. All right, so just some objectives. We're gonna go over this fancy terminology called the joint by joint approach or concept. We're gonna go through a mobility screening a few common injuries, um, some fixes and exercises you can do, and then kind of talking about if you do need to see someone like a physical therapist, we'll go through a summary, and then if anyone has any questions, feel free. All right, so as we know, the golf swing involves the entire body. It's very demanding. And the body is actually broken down into alternating segments of stability and mobility. So I like this photo. So it kind of broke everything down and you can see it alternates. If you look kind of like left column, right column. So we'll kind of come back to this too. So basically if one area is not doing its job, then other areas of the body are going to experience dysfunction and possibly pain. As a result, the body is always going to sacrifice stability in order to create mobility. So these mobility issues must be resolved first before addressing the stability issues because the stability issues need sufficient mobility to complete. So a lot of word vomit right there, but important. 
All right, so we're gonna go through a screening that I will generally do in the clinic. First one is pretty easy. It's, can you touch your toes? Kind of a funny picture, um, but basically it looks at how well you can hinge. So being in your golf posture, and then also kind of test your hamstrings. Um, you can isolate one leg if you kind of stand up and bend one leg and then go forward. And then that'll test the leg that's straighter, if that kind of makes sense. And one that we won't touch on unless you're specifically having neck issues and you can always message me, but I kind of like to put this into perspective because the neck is super involved in golf, but a lot of people don't realize it. So you actually need 70 degrees of neck rotation on each side, because as you go to the top of the backswing, you're actually at 70 degrees of rotation which is crazy. <laughs> so a good test you can do by yourself, you can kind of point on your collarbone and then can you turn your neck and touch your collarbone without opening your mouth, shrugging or kind of leaning? And then you do it on both sides. All right. So this 90-90 test, so it's looking at shoulder mobility and stability, kind of back of the shoulder muscles, if you've heard of the rotator cuff. So you're going to move your arm out to the side, elbow is bent as well, and you can try it just standing straight up first, and then you're going to rotate your arm back, and then he's also doing this test in his golf posture, kind of hard to do it with the computer, and then rotating back. So you're looking at it relative to the spine angle. So hopefully you can kind of see my mouse here. So he's going a little bit beyond his spine angle here and a little bit beyond his spine angle here. So you at least want to be right at this spot, if not further. And we'll kind of talk about why you need that motion as well. All right, so the seated trunk rotation test. If you've heard of the term thoracic spine or thoracic rotation, shoulder turn, all talking about the same thing. You can put like a towel, a ball in between, cross your arms, and then rotate. So if you kind of think of your nose at like 90 degrees, you kind of want to at least split it to 45 each side. And then younger kids are going to have a little bit more rotation than someone that's a little bit older. And then this one, you'll need probably a partner to do. This is lying on your back, bringing your knee and hip up into 90 degrees. So you kind of look at my hip here, just like that, but laying down. And then you're gonna turn that foot outwards and then and the knee is pointed in. That's why it's called internal rotation. And then same idea with that you kind of go to that 45 degree mark when you kind of think of the axis like this, kind of somewhere in the middle on each hip. All right, next we're gonna go into some common injuries. I always love a good pun, so I had fun with these. And I just kind of took two common injuries. There's, of course, a bunch, but this is what I see often. Um, so elbow pain, a lot of times it's just how you're approaching impact with the ball because there's a lot of vibration and force that has to be absorbed through the elbows, wrists, and forearms. 
And then also kind of looking at range of motion limitations in the shoulder can be a big factor in that wrist and elbow pain. And if those rotator cuff muscles aren't stable and strong, then the likelihood of these sort of injuries are going to be higher. Um, what's pretty common on the course is just taking a hard divot or chunking the ball. So you're just making excessive contact with the ground. Sometimes you're going to feel like a twinge, discomfort, um, could be just on one swing that you could feel the rest of the round, maybe after, or just something that's like temporary and goes away. And mats are extremely hard on your body because even more forces have to be absorbed through the elbow. And a lot of times this can happen in the trail inside part of the elbow. All right, so kind of some checks to do with yourself. Did you pass that shoulder 90-90 test that we just kind of talked about? So looking at the mobility. And then kind of looking at your training program, like are you strengthening your shoulder? So specifically muscles that attach to the shoulder blade. So something that does external rotation, working on back of the shoulder muscles. Things like rows are going to be super beneficial. And so if you do have any sort of like acute injury of the elbow, um, you want to make sure that the tissue, the muscles are healthy first. So you can kind of move your elbow wrist around and see if there's any motions that kind of cause pain. Uh, so basically, you know, when you have injury, your tissues are unhealthy. So, you know, make, you want to make sure everything is aligning properly. Uh, someone told me once that if you kind of think of like a parallel plate of spaghetti, nice and straight, you stick a fork in it and spin it. That's basically what happens when there's something like acute and injury happening. So you want to kind of loosen everything up so the spaghetti falls off the fork. So what you can kind of do on your own is take a golf ball or you don't have to use a golf ball, but why not? Because we're talking about golf. So if you find a spot that hurts, you can apply pressure and then kind of roll it. Ideally, I'd probably have like my arm supported, but just for the sake of the video, you can go kind of up and down side to side, or you can hold it and then kind of wiggle it up. Same thing, wherever you kind of feel that restriction or pain. And you can do that for, you know, a few minutes, a couple times a day. And just kind of talking about some general terminology with elbows and tissue and muscle. So inside, it goes all the way from just above the elbow all the way into the hand. So if you have inside elbow pain, that muscle is the flexor carpi ulnaris. And then on this side, so kind of outside of the elbow, you'll have your brachioradialis. They call that one the drinking muscle. And then also the common extensors. And then kind of once you've done that, tissue is feeling pretty good. It's important to strengthen the elbow to prevent injury and create resilience. So another fancy term called eccentrics that we're gonna go over that are super good for the elbow. All right. So kind of diving in a little bit more. Inside of the elbow pain is medial epicondylitis or golfer's elbow. And then outside of the elbow is called lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow. So medial, inside, and then outside. So eccentric is basically the opposite of what you normally think of. So a bicep curl, so the concentric phase, shortening, is when you pull it up. Eccentric is on the way down. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. So if you have inside of the elbow pain, you're going to do, so we're going to kind of go over four different motions. You're going to focus on... You take a nice dumbbell, 
you're gonna start with the wrist flex, ideally your elbow supported, and then you're gonna slowly lower it down, but then you're gonna help it back up. So you're only doing the eccentric phase, the lengthening phase. So if you take your dumbbell, you go all the way down, and then you come up. So that's if you have inside of the elbow pain. Then the opposite, if you have that outside, you're gonna start with the wrist extended like this. Come up, go all the way down. Help it with the opposite hand, and then do it again. So if five or so pounds is too much, then just start with something light. Perfectly fine. You'd be surprised at how difficult these are. And the goal will be to work towards like 10 to 20 repetitions for a few rounds. Doesn't have to be on day one. And then the elbow also does what's called pronation supination. And for that same principle, but you can also use your golf club. So something like a golf club is going to have a longer lever arm than like a weight. So if you need to kind of choke up on it, completely fine. This is like a nine iron, but I'll try to show you in the picture. So pronation is palm down, and then you're going to help it up. And then supination is here, palm up and then here. Pronation, help up, supination, help up. Hey, Megan. Yeah. Uh, we just had a very interesting question pop up. So before we yeah. go off of this, um, Brian asked us here, uh, he's trying to determine whether he has golfer's elbow. And in general, does elbow pain due to golfing usually affect both elbows or just one? it can affect both elbows. Um, a lot of times if it's both elbows, it can be kind of your position at impact. Um, I'm not like a swing coach by any means, but there are certain swing faults that cause pain on both sides. Um, I think I have it in my notes. So if you do have pain on both sides, uh, let me know, but that's definitely, common so if you like flip it or like a forward shaft lean if you like cast it sometimes that can put stress on both sides yeah if you send me in the chat your contacts i'll kind of lay it out because i have i think i have my notes in my powerpoint slide because i was ready for that question so i'd be happy to type that out for you. All right. So then kind of moving into low back pain. So it can be caused by restrictions in the front hip internal rotation, shoulder mobility and the back arm but also the front arm too, and then thoracic rotation. So if you want, just to kind of like conceptualize it, if you kind of stand up and then you take the club back, watch what your hips are doing. They're kind of doing that dance move. So that's actually internal rotation when you shift your weight onto your back leg. And then when you go on the downswing, you're gonna have to shift your weight again. So that's internal rotation. And then when you also take the club back, Come back to that 90-90 test, and that's that shoulder external rotation. And then same thing with thoracic rotation, too. So just kind of breaking all of that down. And then, you know, just kind of talking about, like, why you might have back pain if you have deficits in there. So if you if your hips can't rotate, you're going to kind of do something funky with your back. You're going to have to kind of side bend, rotate, maybe bend your knees, and it's going to crunch the back. You're going to be kind of crunching it down. So you might look a little funky. Uh, it can also be caused by just like not keeping your golf posture should kind of like 
keeping your eyes up, coming out of golf posture. They call it early extension. Um, so basically, when we kind of think back at that um, joint by joint approach, the lumbar spine, the lower part of your spine is supposed to maintain stability. And so with everything else kind of being out of whack, your lower back is going to perform more motion than what it's intended to be. And then you can also get like hip flexor tightness as well. Um, so you kind of think of like, kind of like almost like a booty pop, like super tight here, super arched here. So unfortunately we spend a lot of time sitting. And so that can play a factor as well. All right. And some soft tissue fixes. Um, foam rolling is great for the thoracic spine. You start kind of under your ribs. You can roll it up towards like that spiny part of your shoulder blade. And then if you find a spot that's a little bit like sticky, you can kind of arch and do a reverse crunch over top if that feels right for you. Uh, you also have this side hip muscle that can get tight. It's called your gluteus medius that can refer to your back pain. And then it goes like all the way up here and then all the way down to the bony part right here. And you can foam roll that. I call foam rolling like search and destroy. You're just trying to find all of those kind of like tender points and roll them out. Like 30 second bouts for a few minutes. And then there's this weird muscle called the psoas, silent P. But if you take your kind of belly button and then your ribs, and there's about like a two or three inch gap and then it runs along the inside. So one of those like tight hip flexors if you kind of go in, she's not quite at like a 45 degree angle, but you can kind of lay on top of like a softball or something like that. And then just kind of lay on it, take a few deep breaths. And sometimes it can be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so just kind of be, don't put all of your weight on at first if you're a little bit hesitant. And kind of going off of some tight hips. Um, a couch stretch, super beneficial, um, get, get those hip flexors, opening up the hip, doing the opposite of what we do all the time. And then depending on how flexible you are, um, working on your hip internal rotation, if you found that it's, you know, super tight, you couldn't really push it very far. You can put something between your knees and then just try to move your foot outward. So same thing like the test, but you're activating those muscles. And if you're super flexible, like this person at the bottom, this is called a hip 90, 90 stretch. Cause that fr front knee is a 90, the back is a 90 as well. So that's a little bit more intense of a stretch. And then if you were looking at the shoulder 90-90 test and you didn't quite have equal to spine angle, you can actually stretch it with a golf club. That's an easy one to do out on the course. We're kind of looking at muscle activation. He actually has a lot. Most people won't really go anywhere at, <laughs> at all. Um, but this is a super good one too that activates all of these muscles that you need. So it's kind of like a mobility and stability in one. And these are my favorites. So working on that thoracic spine rotation, even helpful if you find yourself working at a desk or just in general, because everything is in front of us these days. But open book, so her knees, are bent, hips are bent. So that locks out the lower spine so you can focus on the upper spine. And then you can also do this in like a hands knees position. This will be a little bit harder because you're also activating those muscles as well. And you can do, you know, like five or 10 on each side, um, depending if it feels right to hold it or go in and out, that's completely fine. All right, so do I need to see a physical therapist? So kind of go through the screening. 
see what you're limited in or if anything kind of matches up to your symptoms. You could ask someone to video your swing, kind of looking at downswing into impact, especially if you have that both sides elbow pain, it's probably what you're doing at impact. And then you can kind of try some of these exercises or fixes for a few weeks if it's more on the mild side. But if it's, you know, more moderate to severe and you just want another opinion, definitely come see a physical therapist. And then just kind of in summary, going back to that joint by joint approach. So if one area of the body is lacking mobility, other areas of your body are going to have to compensate. So your body is always going to sacrifice stability in order to create mobility. So your stable elbows, as you can see in the picture, and lower back will try to become more mobile to make up for the lack of mobility in some of those other areas. So like your shoulders, thoracic spine, and hips. And as a result, it could lead to pain and dysfunction. And then you can message me if you have more specific questions for like mechanics, compensations at impact, or at multiple sites of elbow pain. I'll, I'll go through and find one slide that kind of has it laid out or I'll send it to you. Um, and I'll do my best to help, but like I said, don't ask me any swing tips because I'm not a uh, ideal golfer as it is. My thoracic spine is terrible. Um, some of my resources, um, I've listened to this podcast. If you like that sort of stuff, it's 18 Strong Podcast. Uh, I did one of my internships at Par for Success, um, so I have to give some credit to them. And then the website, My TPI, is super helpful because it has like drills, exercises, and articles. If you have more specific things, they go over swing faults too. Um, they might even talk about how to fix them, but I think their videos are really good. And then they have like a whole exercise video library. So this is my contact information. If you have any other questions, and there's my orange tabby cat named Obi. All right. Well, Megan, that was that was great. That was a lot of great information. Personally, I am not a golfer. Um, I actually went out with some colleagues and friends to uh, Drive Shack recently, and uh, I I'm pretty I'm pretty okay with sports, and I just flat out embarrassed myself hard <laughs> out there. Um, <clears throat> so I can understand why walking around for three hours and cursing on a Sunday afternoon would be really attractive to people, but <laughs> not for me. Um, so at this time, let's go ahead. Let's, let's open it up to any questions that, that people might have. Um, you can either, why, why don't we go ahead and put them in the chat if anybody does have any questions there. And then the person uh, that had both sides elbow pain, um, I have the information. I don't know if I'm still sharing my screen. So I don't know if it's, if it's like opposite sides um but i do have some more information if you're still on there uh, i believe he is and you are still sharing your screen uh but now with all of your notes yeah yep. that's fine oh my and secret while, hidden and while we're waiting there if anybody's going to chip in i'm just going to put into the chat one more time our links there for facebook and for our youtube channel so I invite you to please take take note of those. Um, if you found this on our Facebook uh, page, um, I will be posting the uh, direct YouTube link to this talk there to make sure that people um, have access to it for the future. Cool. Yeah, and feel free to jot this stuff down um, about the forward shaft lean or the flip. Um, Chunking is usually inside of elbow. Um, chicken winging is usually outside. So more amateur players, um, kind of like myself, uh, <laughs> you'll get some outside of the elbow pain. 
I will say I was at the um, I was at the beach last weekend, and we went to play mini golf. And my uh, my short game is on point right now. So uh, I just need to get close enough to the hole, <laughs> and then yeah. I'm pretty okay. Now, regular golf courses they have windmills and clowns' mouths at the holes, right? Absolutely. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> Depends on how many birds they're flying around and yeah. how many obstacles you got to dodge. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in here. Um, so I guess we'll just take this opportunity to um, say thank you, Megan, for a great um, presentation here. Um, thank you again. Um, we'll go ahead and make sure that these get posted on our social media site so that people have access to it. Um, our next therapy Thursday is going to be two weeks from today, the 15th of July. And our uh, topic is going to be, do you have pandemic neck? So if you've uh, had some uh, postural issues during this extended time, um, being on the computer, working from home and whatnot, this might be one that you want to, uh, want to attend. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for attending, and uh, we will see you next time. Thank you.